Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Lopch and I'm going to present this paper called Evo Designer Towards Aiding Creativity in Graphic Design by me, João Correa and Knoz Alvanchado. Graphic design artifacts like posters on the streets or book covers on store shelves often need to compete with each other to be seen, catch attention and communicate. Thus, Finding disruptive aesthetics that attract people's attention is of the utmost importance. However, creating disruptive aesthetics can be time consuming, so because of short timelines or short budgets, often designers adopt trendy solutions rather than exploring disruptive ones. So how can one fasten the, the creative process in graphic design? Can evolutionary computation help? Today, we are going to present uh, the first iteration on a system we have projected to assist graphic designers during the creative process. This system takes form as an extension for Adobe InDesign, a uh, widely used uh, desktop publishing software for graphic design. And this way, both humans and machine can contribute alternately to the process by editing pages in the same uh, graphic design software. In this presentation, we'll start by overviewing the whole system, then we'll present the developments made so far, and we'll conclude by pinpointing uh, the next uh, development steps. So, for starting with Apple Designer, first uh, one must create a document in InDesign, and manually in input images and texts to create one or more initial pages. Then, uh, using a proper interface uh, developed by us, the user can input keywords describing the concept of the project and define fixed parameters, for example, some visual assets that must always be used, for example, the, the color red and other necessary settings, such as uh, fitness preferences. By clicking Generate, the system will start by calling a module for translating keywords into visual tools or tool properties. For example, the keyword Sun could translate to the circle tool, the color yellow, and the external brightness. These tools are then set as the mutation operators that are more likely will perform in the evolution of the pages using a genetic algorithm. When the evolutionary process ends, the user can manually uh, post-produce the results and create final arts. In this first iteration, we focus on the development of the evolutionary engine. So after creating a document and inserting items, we jump right to the evolutionary process. First, the engine will take the selected pages and create an initial population. For example, the user might create these three pages and optionally, we can select items that are mandatory, that is, items that must be present in every individual. For example, the text content. Also, one might label the items so the system can recognize equivalent items. For example, if pages A and B will cross over, only one of these titles will be inherited by the offspring. Here we can see examples of 10 pages from the initial population, automatically created by mutating and crossing over the previous three pages. Also you can see that because the title, subtitle and text body were set as mandatory, they are included in every individual. Then after We've got fitness assignment. But besides, we have planned several fitness assignment methods, such as for evaluating legibility, style, innovation degree, or page balance. In this iteration, we focus on the development and testing of the evolutionary engine. So, for a fitness assignment, we've used an existing well established metric, the mean square error which not only is, is useful for the validation of the engine, but also in practical graphic design tasks, such as finding unexpected layouts that approximate given drafts, uh, as we'll see further on. 
Determination criteria can be either finding an individual whose fitness equals or exceeds a given threshold, achieving a given number of generations, or manually clicking a button to stop evolving. If no termination criteria was matched, selection will be performed using a tournament size 2 and Elite 1. And lastly, a new population is created by crossover and mutation, and the process repeats. As suggested before, phenotypes consist of the native render uh, InDesign pages, which may contain different types of items, such as text boxes, shapes, or images, which in turn are defined by a number of positioning, geometry, and style properties. These are stored by InDesign in a JSON format, so genotypes consist of JSON objects containing all the properties and the respective of the respective pages and page items. So far, we have implemented uh, the, the properties shown in the image, but further developments must include many others. The property values might be integers, uh, floats, arrays of numbers, or picked from lists of predefined constants. For example, so far, colors have been picked from a, a fixed list of seven colors, black, white, magenta, yellow, red, green, and cyan. Currently, crossover operations consist in passing whole page items to the offspring, not individual properties. First page items from the first parent are inherited randomly. Each item with a 50% chance to be inherited by the offspring with the same position, geometry, and style. The offspring will contain the same number of items as parent 1, so for each not inherited item of parent 1, the system tries to pick from the second parent a random item that has not been inherited yet. For example, the title won't pass because the offspring already contains a title. And the system knows that because these should have equal labels. Considering the subtitle is mandatory, the system will search for an item called subtitle, which must exist in parent 2 because mandatory items exist in every individual, and will pass it to the offspring. Lastly, there is one item left to be passed, however, the, the last item in parent 2 is a text which already exists in the offspring, so it won't pass and the, the item from parent 1 will be passed instead. The same would happen if there weren't enough items in the second parent. Here you can see the offspring comparing to its parents. As mutation is concerned, each property of each page item has a 1% chance to be mutated, changing the position, geometry, and other style properties of the items. As already, as already mentioned, fitness is assigned by calculating the mean square error between um, a given target image and the given individual. This will return a value referring to the difference between these images. Then, fitness equals the negated mean square error, so the higher the value, the more similar the individual might be to the target. Also, as briefly mentioned, uh, a practical application for this uh, approach would be exploring layouts that can resemble the targets. For testing the system, uh, the three little stylized posters shown before uh, were evolved. And again, title, subtitle and text body were set as mandatory. We've experimented evolving towards two different kinds of targets. What the posters design in InDesign? For example, if a designer likes a given existing poster, the system might help create new ones with similar page balance, but which will end up being different enough because these must contain different items, stylized in different ways. And a second kind of target is sketches of posters. For example, a designer might sketch an abstract layout and let the system generate posters that can approximate it using a given set of page items. In first experiments, we've evolved the poster until a thousand generations for assessing whether fitness was maximizing, 
and what number of generations would be necessary until no major gains were accomplished. This run has been manually stopped at the generation 480, as no major gains were being observed. As a result, we've achieved the phenotype on the right. The layouts and colors are considerably close, however, all the texts are hidden or out of page, so in future uh, we'll need to address this issue. Therefore, we've set a maximum of 100 generations for the following experiments. And we've targeted the sketches, the sketched posters. For each of those targets, here we can see the average fitness of four runs of the best individuals of each generation. So it has improved and almost stagnated. And regarding phenotypes in the figure, you can see the results uh, for the four different runs. Here using the first sketch as the target. We can see the balance is quite similar. And so are the colors. The second one, the balance is also similar, but it missed the bright yellow stripe here. Also, the hue of the colors was not perfectly matched, only the red, but it often matched the darker tones. And for the third one, again, similar conclusions can be drawn. So in general terms, the phenotypes suggest the system has been able to approximate the layout of the targets, especially concerning darker zones. And regarding color palette, one might say it has been partially approximated. An evident shortcoming on using only the mean square error for fitness assignment is we can't guarantee that uh, the mandatory items are always visible. Ev so evaluating legibility might be a, uh, a possible approach for improving the results regarding this issue. Even so, designers can also solve it uh, by post-editing the results in InDesign. For improving the system, several modules uh, must be added, such as a module for translating keywords into visual properties or tools, for example, for limiting the search space towards a given creative concept, which we already started to work on, a module for evaluating legibility, evaluating, evaluating uh, page balance, innovation, which we also are working on already, a module to assess how much an image might be in style with a given aesthetic movement, and also a method for positioning items according to page grids, promoting more organized layouts. Lastly, we end up our presentation showcasing examples of posters generating using uh, various setups, setups regarding various generations and even slightly different versions of the system. Thank you.